it is almost the end of the year and we've had all the big phone releases. And so now I think is the time to answer the question that I keep getting asked of what is the best phone for 2022. And although I'm an iPhone kind of guy, my winner of this year's phone of the year award might actually surprise you. Now I've roped in a few friends of mine to help me with sharing their pick for best phone of 2022. So yeah, what's the best phone of 2022? Obviously that's a highly subjective question. Bearing in mind I'm an iPhone guy and a Apple fanboy, let's be honest. When it comes to the best phone this year, it's actually been an easy decision for me. What's up guys, Michael here from Michael's Tech Talk. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Mike here from Team VRY. Hi guys, it's Paul from Geeky Stuff. Hey Pete and everyone else on this video collaboration and the audience watching this as well. Hi, my name is Ben from Lover of Tech. Hi everyone, my name is Jess and I'm a tech enthusiast. Without further ado, I will go first. I normally carry around two phones with me. Sometimes it's two Android phones, but typically it is one Apple and one Android phone. And for Apple, I carry around the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which I don't think is the phone of the year. Now, I personally still recommend last year's iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max over this year's 14, just because I already had to, you know, pay to upgrade to review this. And now I'm kind of full of regrets for the next 12 months until the iPhone 15 comes out, of course. Now, we all know that the 13 Pro Max has the best battery life we've seen in any phone with its two plus day battery life. You also get 120 Hertz ProMotion display and some great and reliable cameras. And of course, everything that comes with the Apple ecosystem. But you can't buy the 13 Pro anymore because Apple want you to buy the 14 Pro instead. Now, the other phone that I usually carry around me is my phone of the year for 2022. But before that, You'd think that my phone of the year for 2022 would be the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Nah, in fact, it is the Pixel 7 Pro. Now, before this, I had experience of the Pixel 4a, which I absolutely loved, and the 6a, which similarly was fantastic. But this is on another level for many reasons. Firstly, the price. This is 350 quid cheaper than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's got the same display size, the same build quality. It's just as fast. And then you get to the camera, and I know this is subjective, but for me personally, I think the Pixel has always provided the best photos. There is a fair amount of processing going on and the hardware in here hasn't changed for years, but that doesn't matter for people like me who just love the images it produces. You'll also get to experience the most stock, original, pure version of Android on any smartphone. But the price really is the clincher for me. If you bundle all of that stuff together, the build quality, the size of the phone, the Android experience, the camera, and then you remove 350 quid from what you'd spend on that iPhone 14 Pro Max, it makes it a complete no-brainer. Unless you're completely welded in Apple's ecosystem, which I completely understand. But if you're not, and if you're watching your pennies like so many people at the moment, this really takes some beating. So congratulations, Google and Tim, you've got to try harder. It has to be the Pixel 7 Pro. For me, the Pixel 7 Pro has been such an upgrade over the Pixel 6 Pro. It has massively fixed a lot of issues for me personally that I had with the 6 Pro. The computational photography is fantastic, as to be expected. Fingerprint reader's better. We've got face unlock. We have that Google Assistant, which is just the best voice assistant out there. And we've got that Android 13 Pixel experience. Man, it is the best Android phone for me personally. The choices are usually pretty straightforward because I'm seriously trapped inside the Apple ecosystem. But that's okay, I kind of like it in here. Anyway, that leaves me basically with four options. The iPhone 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro, and Pro Max. Now the first two are not for me. I consider myself to be a power user, whatever that means. I use my phone all day, every day, and the camera is quite important to me, so it has to be one of the Pro models. Now, I used to always go for the largest flagship phones, even back when I was using Samsung, but these phones have become seriously large and seriously bulky, and it's just super annoying to carry around in my pants or my suit pocket. And since the iPhone 14 Pro has pretty much the exact same features as the Pro Max, switching to that smaller form factor made total sense to me, and I'm happy I did. Besides, I love using my iPad mini, so I really don't have a need for that extra screen real estate on the iPhone Pro Max. I did get the gold one, which I'm not a fan of, but it was the only one I could still get my hands on for release date, you know, YouTuber problems. But that's actually fine because my phone lives in a case anyway, and as it turns out, that gold looks pretty awesome inside a cognac leather case. Anyway, great camera, snappy ProMotion display, and of course, Monkey Island. Is it the perfect phone? Definitely not. The battery's kind of crap, and I hate that fossil of a lightning port, but with the new EU rules, that will be a thing of the past soon enough. Back to you in the studio. 
Today I'm going to talk about my favourite phone of 2022, the phone that I have been most surprised by this year and uh, for me is the best value for money that you can get at the moment is the Google Pixel Pro 7. So I picked this up at launch, I think for the money against the other flagships like the S22 Ultra and the iPhone Pro ranges, you can't get much better value. I think it's £850 in the UK, it's got a brilliant screen, really good camera and it runs Android 13 and native Android 13 so it's really quick and responsive. So if you're looking for a really good flagship phone for a really good price then you can't go too far wrong with the Pixel 7 Pro. And the one that comes out on top for me is going to be the app. No, it's not. It's the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. I really think that Samsung nailed the user experience on this phone. Like yourself, Pete, I'm here in the UK, so we suffered with the Exynos versions for a while, right? To get this Snapdragon processor on the Samsung phone made a big difference for me in comparison with the S22 Ultra here, for example. But on top of everything else, I just love how friendly this is to use, how ergonomic it feels, despite how chunky it looks. You know, that was my first reaction, and it's actually really nice to use. I'll be honest, initially I thought that there was a novelty factor at play here, right? Because unfolding your phone is something new to me but it's been a few months now and I'm still delighted every time I pick this up so fun of the year for me and for me I'd have to say that my phone of the year would have to be the Google Pixel 7 it manages to combine a great design Google's terrific computational photography impressive performance a clean version of Android all at a very similar price to the Pixel 6 from last year so yeah I've had a great time using it so far and it's probably one of my most favorite Android phones. And in particular, I am a big fan of how the camera performs. It's become my go-to main camera. And yeah, all in all, I do like the Pixel 7 for what it offers. So for 2022, I am crowning this my phone of the year. It will be the Pixel 7 Pro. That's my personal phone, the Pixel 7 Pro. So many improvements from the 6 Pro. But I'm looking at now at, a, at the average Joe. If I also recommend one phone to anyone out there, or the average Joe, the average sort of person, the average consumer. It's got to be this, the Pixel 6a. Purely for affordability, incredible software, all the latest and greatest software updates, superb camera system, reliable camera system. Battery life is very good as well, it's compact, it just ticks all the right boxes and it's only 399 and you might even better get it cheaper in some deals over Christmas as well. Um, but for me, guys, that is the phone of the year. Talk about my phone of 2022, and it's got to be the Pixel 7 series, especially the Pixel 7 Pro. For all the improvements Google have actually done with what they started with the Pixel 6, and it still kept the price at 899 US dollars, and for us here in the UK at 849 pounds, compared to the competition, they are far ahead and really stealing the show. Like the ability to shoot 4K60 on all the cameras at the same time, without the need to stop recording and switching between all the lenses, yeah, it's clear. Much. Tensor G2 with all the intelligent features with text to speech. Look, I could go on and on, but for me, for sure, yeah, it's got to be the Pixel 7 series. And for me, it is specifically the Pixel 7 Pro. And for me, one that I would say is my phone of the year for 2022 is actually the Galaxy Fold. Four, which for me is a runaway winner by a big margin, you know, not just the size. But I did actually have the Fold 3 and just didn't like it. I think with the larger front screen on the Fold 4, it makes a totally different phone slash tablet to me. Now we get all of the usual Samsung flagship hardware here, beautiful display, great cameras, surprisingly good battery life considering the size of this. And the one thing that no other company has mastered as well as Samsung yet on a phone or even a tablet for that matter, and that is multitasking. Now with the Fold 4 software experience, you just like tap and drag what you want, where you want it. And you can also resize everything and it just works, which is a pretty hardcore Apple user. It's something I never thought I'd say about Android. Um, now I know some of you will tell me, you know, what about the iPads? But honestly, has anyone actually tried using their new stage manager? It just feels like a hot mess to me. On the Fold 4, I just love using the big front screen. I love the feel of it in the hands. The only thing I wish it had really was the voice transcription services, the features of the Google Pixel, because those features alone really for me make the Pixel 7, the Pixel 7 Pro come a very, very close second. So what are your favorite smartphones for 2022? Do drop them down below in the comments. A huge thanks to everybody who helped me out with this video. Subscribe to the channel for more. And next up, go and watch this video, which is all about my awesome experience with the Galaxy Fold 4.